we're given a graph of a rational function, as you can see on the left hand side. Our goal on this is to put it all together and come up with whatever the function itself is that would produce this graph. So we're going to collect some information here. We're going to get x-intercepts, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and the y-intercept, and put that all together to get the function itself. So first of all, let's look at x-intercepts. So x-intercepts are where we cross the x-axis or touch the x-axis. So on the graph, it looks like we have x-intercepts at negative 2 and positive 3. Now, the next thing I notice on these is that both of these cross. So I'm just going to go ahead and say they both cross. That tells us something about their multiplicities. Okay, these multiplicities both have to be odd because they cross. Now, x-intercepts, where those come from, if I was looking at a function, would be from the numerator and factors that go hand in hand with these x-intercepts or zeros. So if we have a zero at negative two, as we do have an x-intercept there, I'm gonna go ahead and put the factor x plus two in our numerator. With three, I'm gonna include x minus three as a factor in our numerator. Okay, it's always basically x minus whatever we've listed over here. So x minus three, x minus a negative two makes x plus two. Next, the information we can say about their multiplicities being odd, where that contributes is it's the exponent each one of these factors is raised to. So since we said they both have to be odd, we'll just go with the smallest possible odd number. We'll make them both raised to the first power, or we could leave that out and it's understood they're raised to the first power. Now, if we did have one, uh, these x-intercepts that touch, what I mean by that is we come up to the x-axis, touch there, and come back the same direction, stay on the same side of the x-axis. That's not the case on this one, so they're going to get odd multiplicities. Next of all are vertical asymptotes. Now these are not designated with dashed lines on our graph, however it looks pretty apparent that it, we're going up as we get close to an x value of negative one, down as we get, go close to an x value of negative one. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one. Something very similar could happen over here at two. It appears that we go down on the right side, down on the left side. So I'm gonna say x equals positive two is gonna be a second vertical asymptote. Those are gonna correspond with factors in our denominator. So in a very similar fashion, it's x minus whatever we said was our vertical asymptote. So x minus negative one is x plus one as a factor. At two, we can say x minus two as a factor. Um, the next thing I'd like to look at is, do we stay on the same side of the x-axis or do we go to opposite sides of the x-axis um, looking at these vertical asymptotes? So at negative one, we have one tail goes up and one goes down. I'm gonna classify that as being on opposite sides of the x-axis. In a similar fashion to our x-intercepts going to the opposite, opposite side or crossing, I'm gonna go ahead and say that means we have an odd multiplicity or exponent on that factor. For two, you'll notice that two, these tails both stay on the same side of the x-axis. So I'm gonna say that's same side which is gonna tell us that our multiplicity is gonna be even. So going with the smallest odd and the smallest even as we typically tend to do, we said that for negative one, which was this factor, it's gonna to be to an odd multiplicity. So I'm gonna say one. And for two, that came from this factor, I'm gonna say an even multiplicity, I'm gonna go with two for its multiplicity. All right, next up our horizontal asymptote. It appears that these are, these are at the extremes. So off to the left-hand side, looks like maybe we get close to the x-axis. A little tough to tell, but on the right-hand side, it doesn't appear that it goes up forever or anything like that. It appears we're getting closer to the x-axis. So the x-axis is when y equals zero. Um, and for horizontal asymptotes, how we determine these is we compare our degrees. So we want the degree of the denominator to be larger than the degree of the numerator. And that's what happens for our situation, how we've set it up. We can add together these multiplicities and get two plus one makes three for our denominator's degree. One plus one would make two for our degree of the numerator. So denominator is bigger than the numerator. That fits into this situation where we get y equals zero for our horizontal asymptote. All right, last thing we wanna be careful of is our y-intercept. Our y-intercept, it appears we have a point on our graph at negative two. 
So as an ordered pair, that's zero, negative two. How that's gonna help us out is there could be some sort of stretch or compression out in front, a scalar multiple. So typically we designate this with simply an A as some unknown number. And let's plug in the values we know here. I'm gonna plug in zero for X and negative two for F of X, because that's what I named my function. And we're gonna replace those values in and we're gonna have an equation that only has one unknown. We're still not gonna know what A is, but with a bunch of constants and simply a, we're gonna be able to solve for a. So in our numerator here, we can say zero plus two inside that set of parentheses, zero minus three in the next set, over zero plus one and zero minus two, but remember that that factor is squared. Okay, so an equation, a bunch of constants, one unknown. Let's do a little bit of solving down for a. So I'm gonna take this one step at a time. Let's say this is a, multiplied by two multiplied by negative three over one multiplied by negative two squared is gonna be positive four. So negative two equals negative six A as I multiply our constants over four. And then to get A by itself, I'm gonna first multiply both sides by four. So negative eight equals negative six A and then to get a completely by itself, we'll divide by negative six. So I got a is with a little reducing down four thirds, taking out the negatives and the, the multiples of two. All right, so our function, write it down here is simply, we need to take this value of a, go back to the function we created here and I'm gonna plug it in. Now I'm gonna put the four in the numerator and the three in the denominator. So our function is gonna turn out being four multiplied by the quantity x plus two, multiplied by the quantity x minus three, over, remember I'm putting the three in the denominator, x plus one times the quantity x minus two squared. And there we have our function that would produce this graph um, based on all the information we collected. All right, hope this helps out as you're working through coming up with the function based on the rational graph. Good luck.